Hi, and welcome to module eight of lecture series, video lecture two. Um, this one's on convergence, divergence, and limits of sequences and series. In the previous module, we talked about what a sequence was, what a series was, and gave some examples of why we care about them. Oftentimes, the actual reason we care about them is we care not about any kind of finite series or sequence, but about what happens when we take it on forever. Taking it on forever is a sort of rough way of describing the limit of a series or a sequence. The limit of anything is what you get if you go on taking some pattern on forever. So for example, let's take this sequence. So here's a common sequence. Third, one fourth, one fifth. What ha what's the, where did the sequence go on forever? Where does it end up? Well, without doing any kind of math, you can kind of guess, right? There's a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, and so on. If I keep adding 1 to the denominator in every case, I'll eventually get 1,000. I'll eventually get a million. And so on. You can see what happens. This gets closer and closer to 0. So intuitively, you can think about the limit of this sequence here, limit, as being 0. Right. So as I take the sequence on forever, in the limit, as it reaches forever, I get 0. That's a rough definition of a limit. A little more formal one has us write the sequence as this. Right. And so that's time, sometimes you see i, sometimes you see n, doesn't really matter. If this is the sequence, we find this 1 over n, and here n can go from 2 to infinity, what's the limit? Now let's actually back up another step. Um, we'll get rid of this and call it 1 over n from n equals 2 to capital N. What does that mean? That means you get one half, one third, dot to dot, all the way up to one over big N. A limit in this case is the same thing as taking this big N over here and making it bigger and bigger and bigger until it hits infinity. So I could write this as lim, capital N goes to infinity, of one over N n equals 2 to n. This is the exact same thing as writing 1 over n. Whenever, whenever you see infinity in the bounds of some sequence, that's the same thing as taking some variable like n and sending it to infinity. So limit as n goes to infinity is the exact same thing as just putting infinity in the bound. That's what, in fact, putting infinity in the bound means you're taking a limit. So in this case, we've already said this thing equals zero. The limit of the sequence one over n goes is equal to zero as big n goes to infinity. Why do we care? Well, for instance, we gave an example last time of a series of payoffs in which future payoffs were discounted. And we wrote it like this, where t is each period. So t equals 0 is the very first period, and so on. Well, what exactly does that mean? As t goes to infinity, what happens there? Well, if delta is less than 1, which it was by assumption, then the sequence is 1, delta, delta squared, delta cubed. We can stop at some capital T, some large number. These, since each one of these deltas is less than one, when you square it, you get a number even smaller than delta. So the property of a number less than one, sorry, a number between zero and one, that when you square it, it's less than the original one. And so on forever, so this number gets smaller and smaller and smaller as t goes to infinity, 
And this single arrow means goes to, as opposed to a double arrow, which means implies. The single arrow means goes to. As t goes to infinity, this number get this delta the t gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it eventually hits zero. So the limit of this sequence of payoffs is zero, which means that eventually in the limit you no longer care about what happened in that period. So that's why I care about the sequences. And there's other reasons as well. Um, let's move on now to series. To series, rather. <laughs> um, a series, again, is a sum of a sequence, basically. So we can write that same. Let's start with a different series. Let's start with. I um, oh, you know what? Let's start with that. Okay. This one's from the textbook. And let's make it to the i. And that's i equals 0 to um, infinity. Again, that's the same thing as taking the limit of, let's say, capital N going to infinity of the sum i equals 0 to capital N 3 over 10 raised to the power of i. Note, I'm changing i's and n's and t's left and right. These are indices. Indices are what are called dummy variables. They mean nothing in and of themselves. They serve only to keep track of some sequence. Therefore, you can make you can assign them to any letter you want. You must only keep be careful to keep track of your indices and don't sum over an index you're not actually um, using at the moment. Right? Don't have j equals zero to infinity with an i inside the sum. <laughs> Um, this might seem like a silly thing to worry about, but sums also come up a lot in, say, programming. And when you're programming, you do have to be more careful about where you put your indices, making sure you're actually summing over the right thing or looping over the right index and so on. But this is not programming, but you still must be careful about the indices. Okay. So these two things are the same. They're two ways of writing the limit of a finite sum. How we do this? We can write it out. Well, when i is 0, you have 10 to the 0th power, which is 1. So this is 3 over 1. And the next one is 3 over 10, then 3 over 10 squared, which is 100. And 3 over 100, 10 cubed, which is 1,000, and so on forever. Well, that's 3 plus 0 0.3 plus point, um, sorry, 0. 3 plus point zero zero three plus forever equals 3.3 bar where the bar means repeating. There's 3.333 forever, which is the same thing as 3 and a third. This is similar to the example in the book. Um, this is the sum of a series. In fact, you can think of any decimal as being the sum of a series of, power, of, of 1 over powers of 10. Similarly, you can think of any run, any number as being um, this, a series of some form over powers of oh, times powers of ten. Now, in these cases, this is only a pretty boring one. When you'll have three, is you could change the number three for every single element of the series. So, for instance, a general decimal might be written um, between zero and one. Might be written like. where xi is some digit between um, 0 and 9. You could do it this way. Um, no one does that this way, but you could do it this way, and this means a series. This is a decimal number that's written as a series. So a series again. So for the limit of a series, you just have to take um, the n and make it go towards infinity. Okay. Sometimes you'll find that to calculate an infinite series, you can just Put the put the put the um, infinity where the n is and figure out that way. Sometimes it's a little harder. Oftentimes it's a little harder. Let's go to the example we did before of this series. This is an infinite series. It's the same thing as writing the limit as big T goes to infinity of two times the sum of t equals zero to big T delta to the, to the t. 
They're both the same thing. If the limit of a series, how do you calculate this? In this case, you can do it with a kind of nice trick. Um, let's start by assuming that the answer one over delta. How do we show that? Well, we're trying to show this particular relationship. If we read it the left hand side, we get one plus delta plus delta squared plus forever. If we multiply both sides by one over delta, by sorry, one minus delta, the right side, we can do that because it's an equal sign. The right side then is 1 minus delta over 1 minus delta, and that's 1. That's OK because delta can't be 1, so the bottom can't be 0. And the left hand side is then this. So we have this equation. Now, this is a much longer thing to expand out, but it's just, it follows a pattern we can, we can utilize. If we multiply all the ones first, we get 1 plus delta plus delta squared plus delta cubed plus forever. The negative deltas give you negative delta, negative delta squared, negative delta cubed, forever. When you add them all up together, everything cancels but the one. So we've shown it. This is only true for an infinite series, mind you, because there's no ending to this to worry about. So if this is true, this is a useful identity, by the way, in game theory. We do repeated games. Then we've calculated an infinite series. Now it turns out we're not. It's in the book. We're not, not going to do it on, on this in this lecture right now. But it turns out that if you had the sum from t equals zero to n, it's equal to n plus one delta, um, and as n goes to infinity this thing goes to zero, the sequence goes to zero, and you just get one over one minus delta. So it turns out you can, in fact, take a limit of both sides and get um, equal to one over one minus delta, which we said already is a limit. So these are the limits of sequence and series. Um, one more sort of example, kind of mess you up a little bit. Um, Limit is actually a fairly interesting and kind of and fairly central concept for all the stuff that comes later. And the reason is calculus is fundamentally concerned, at least um, differential calculus, is fundamentally concerned with the instantaneous rate of change of a function. Instantaneous means at that moment in time. So what we're doing actually is trying to understand what happens at a particular moment in time. Effectively, that's the limit of the function at that particular point. The, the limit, sorry, how that function is changing at a particular point on the function, not necessarily a moment in time. Um, so, so that's why we use limits often. But limits are kind of an odd, odd bird, right? So you can think about Zeno's paradox. Let's say you start at point zero. And you want to go to point one, and at every at every moment in time, you traverse half the way towards your endpoint. So in the first moment, you end up at one half, and the second moment you end up at three quarters, and the fourth and the third moment you end up at seven eighths, and so on and so on forever, right? Fifteen sixteenths and so on. Do you ever reach one? Well, not in a finite um, number of steps. Right? In a finite number of steps, there's always another half to go. The real numbers are dense on the number line. There's no gaps there, so there's always another space to go. Sure, you know, right now you're at 15 sixteenths. You're pretty darn close. But you can go to 31 30 seconds, Or you can go to 63 60 fourths. There's always another one to go. It's always closer to one, but there's always another step to take. However, in the limit, this sequence goes to 1. The limit of the sequence is 1. So in the limit, you reach it. Now, you might at this point be wondering, if you hadn't read the book already, you might be wondering, that makes no sense. It's a single step from 0 to 1. I surely get there faster than the limit. And that's true, because each step 
it takes you less and less time to, to take. Um, so in the limit, each step takes zero time. So you're moving zero distance in zero time. Um, and that's the, that deals with infinitesimal change. We'll deal with that a little bit in calculus. Um, but the point is, the limit of this series, this sequence here, goes to 1. So here's the limit. And so this is the limit sequence series. Primarily, you're going to be with limits actually in the context of functions. We'll get to that in a second. But the core idea of limits is applicable and comes up um, pretty readily in sequences and series, which will come up in game theory. Uh, thanks.